Hey guys, welcome to my channel iCode. I am Pallav and today we are going to look at quite a basic yet interesting topic inheritance versus interfaces or protocols because that is how we implement interfaces in iOS. Now it's a fundamental one, interviewers love it and above all it is one topic where they can play around. Because it can have many follow-up questions to test the basics like what is the need of interface, what's the problem with multiple inheritance or some advanced questions like extensions and protocols, can extensions have properties, what kind of properties, stored or computed ones, etc. So let's try to find the answers of all these questions by considering a use case. Assume that you need to make an app for some IT company, some employee management system sort of thing. Yes, I could have taken the example of dog, cat or fruit, but I think that this is more relatable. So let's dive into the code. So before we write some code, let's understand that what are we going to achieve, what we will be handling in this use case. So we'll make a class employee. Then we will need some other classes to represent iOS engineers, backend engineers, because an IT company have different teams. So we will make those classes and then we will see that what can be inherited from the super classes, what functionalities can be reused. At what point will we encounter some case where inheritance won't work and we will need interfaces then we will dive into interfaces and then we'll try to solve those problems along the way we will try to see the concepts of interface and inheritance both hand in hand so let's write the code so the first thing that we are going to do is make an employee class that will represent our employees and i'll be writing all these classes in the same files ideally that should not be the case we should have different files to segregate the code but just for the demo purpose i'll be writing everything in the same file and I'm using class here, though for the models we generally use a struct, but because I want to show the inheritance here, which cannot happen in the structs, so I'm using class here. So let's write our employee class, class employee. And to keep it simple for this example, we'll have nothing else except name. So name that will be the type of a string and an initializer that will get name as a pair argument. So self dot name is equal to name and let's write a function to get details of the employee so function get details and this should return so let's say let's write a print statement here name is and let's print the value of name for string interpolation here name is name and let's instantiate from the viewed it loop. So here, just for the sake, say let employee is equal to employee and any name, say John. And let's call the method on this object employee dot get details and give it a run. Okay, so name is John. So this is our basic setup that we'll be using. Let's make one more class, say iOS engineer, class iOS engineer. And this class will have the functionality. Basically, this will represent the skill set of an iOS engineer. So let's write a function for that function, maybe get language expertise. And let's put a print statement here saying sweat. So I believe that an IS engineer must know the Swift language. So this has been set up here. And this IS engineer will be an employee of the company. So ideally it should have this method get details from where we can get the details of this particular IS engineer. And to do so, either we can set up an initializer like we did in employee class and then a method get details. But by doing so, we will be repeating ourselves and we should follow the practice of writing the dry code. Dry is an acronym for don't repeat yourself. So basically we should not repeat ourselves in the code. So at any point in time, if you feel that you are writing the same code again, give it a thought that there's something wrong that might be going on. There can be some better approach to do that thing. So here, instead of writing the same code again, what we can do is we can inherit IS engineer from this employee class. So let's do that. Now we can access this method get details from the object of IS engineer. So let's try and doing that. 
instead of making the object of class employee what i'll do is i'll make an object of class is engineer here as engineer and let's give it a name john and we can call the get details so we'll leave it like this and we'll add the method get language expertise and let's give it a run right name is john as printed by get details method and swift as printed by get language expertise method this is fine we used inheritance here now let's introduce a little more complexity in our use case by writing a class for devops engineer so class devops engineer and here i'll write say function get devops tools expertise let's say and the expertise can be in using Jenkins, maybe Fastlane, maybe Bamboo. Okay. Also, we can have this inheritance for DevOps engineer too, because DevOps engineer is also an employee of the company. So both IS engineer and DevOps engineer, they inherit from class employee. And that makes sense because both are employees of the organization. But let's introduce a little more complexity here. So for our use case, we'll consider that our IS engineer is a super talented guy. He knows IS as well as DevOps. So because he knows DevOps, there must be a function like get DevOps tools expertise in this class IS engineer too. Okay, so we can go for writing it. Let's copy this here and paste it. Wait, didn't we just repeat ourselves? And we were discussing that we should write the dry code which should not repeat itself. So there is something wrong going on and there can be some better approach. And the better approach can be instead of writing this code here, what I can do is instead of inheriting from employee, I can inherit from DevOps engineer because DevOps engineer inherits from employee. So eventually this IS engineer will get the functionality of employee and the DevOps engineer both. So let's test it. Employee dot get DevOps tools expertise. Name is John from the get details, Swift from get language expertise, Jenkins, Fastlane, and Bamboo from get DevOps tools expertise. Everything is working fine. Now it's the time to introduce a little more complexity, which will eventually lead us to interfaces. So let's go for writing one more class for backend engineers. Class backend engineer. And let's inherit from employee. And let's write a function for showcasing the expertise of backend engineers. So maybe say get messaging Q expertise and let's put a print statement here saying Kafka and RabbitMQ maybe. Now to what we are considering that our IS engineer is a super talented guy. So as he knows the DevOps, he knows a little bit of backend too. Which means that there should be a function in this IS engineer class to showcase the backend skills. Okay, so let's try to do the same thing that we tried here. We inherited the DevOps engineer class in the same way. Let's try and inherit the backend engineer. Let's see what happens. Multiple inheritance from classes DevOps engineer and backend engineer. So the compiler is telling us that we cannot go for multiple inheritance. Why not? Why can't we do multiple inheritance? So there is a problem related to multiple inheritance known as diamond problem and which is why Swift does not support multiple inheritance. Now what is this diamond problem? Let's try to understand this with this example. Consider this class super class which is being inherited from class A and from class B. 
and that is totally fine two different classes can inherit a class that's fine now class a overrides one of the methods from super class class b also overrides the same method from super class now when class c inherits from class a and class b that is class c is doing multiple inheritance it is inheriting both class a and class b class c will not come to know that which implementation which definition of that overridden method is to be inherited this is known as the diamond problem and because of this many languages does not support multiple inheritance yes c++ and few other languages do support multiple inheritance through friend function and few other stuff but let's not go into those details and instead focus that what is the solution for the multiple inheritance in swift and the answer is interfaces or what we call protocols let's look at them protocols defines a blueprint for methods properties and other requirements that suits to a particular piece of functionality so let's try and use protocols here to solve our problem instead of writing these functions directly in these classes let's make three protocols for our is engineer devops engineer and backend engineer say protocol is engineer skill set and i'll write this method here similarly one protocol for protocol say backend engineer skill set and similarly one protocol for devops engineer skill set and this method rather the blueprint of the method <clears throat> so now we have three protocols for IS engineer, backend engineer and DevOps engineer and this means that whosoever confirms to these protocols will have to override these methods so instead of inheriting from these classes let's try and confirming to these protocols so if if it's an IS engineer it must confirm to the protocol IS engineer expertise IS engineer saved it so is it's is engineer skill set my bad is engineer skill set what if i don't write it here the compiler tells me that because you are confirming to this particular protocol you must override the methods that are the part of its blueprint so type is engineer does not confirm to protocol is engineer skill set now what i can do is that i can fix this and can write this method here where I, where i can write the swift but then again there is no point if i'm writing the same implementation every time again so from swift 2 we can write the extensions of the protocols where we can have the default implementation of those methods and this is also one of the interview questions when someone asks you that how can you make a method optional from a protocol in the Swift and the answer is using extensions. So if I go for writing the extension of this protocol extension is engineer skill set and here if I write get language expertise and I can any of my IS engineers must know Swift. So this is a sort of default implementation for this protocol method. And now there's no need for me to override that, that method here. That's my class IS engineer. Also, now I can inherit from the class employee along with IS engineer skill set. Similarly, my IS engineer can also know the devops so i can confirm to the protocol devops engineer skill set but before that let's fix this so let me write the extensions for these two it's devops engineer skill set and its implementation 
which I can pick it up from here. And similarly, the extension for my backend engineer skill set, which will have this method. So now, DevOps engineer, backend engineer, and IS engineer, all these three classes inherit from the class employee. And because IS engineer must have the skill set for IS engineer, we are confirming to this protocol IS engineer skill set. Similarly, the DevOps engineer should have the skill set of DevOps engineer. So we will confirm to the protocol DevOps engineer skill set. And similarly, the backend engineer should have the backend engineer skill set. So we'll confirm it backend engineer skill set. Also, we are not getting the errors that we need to override any of the protocol methods because we wrote the extensions. So now we can say that these methods are optional. And now it's absolutely easy to implement that our IS engineer can have the skill set of iOS, backend, and DevOps, all three of them. So I can directly go and confirm to these protocols DevOps engineer skill set and my bad and backend engineer skill set so let's test this here we are having the object of is engineer get details because it inherits from the class employee where we have the function get details our is engineer also confirms to the protocol devops engineer skill set so we can ask for get devops tools expertise and our is engineer also knows the backend so we can go for get messaging queue expertise and now if i give it a run let's see that what do we see in the logs name is john from the employee class swift that is is language expertise the is engineer skill set jenkins fastline and bamboo from the devops engineer skill set and the messaging queues kafka and rabbit mq from the backend engineer skill set so using protocols, we found an alternative to multiple inheritance, but it is wrong to say that protocols are an alternative to the multiple inheritance. Protocols are way more powerful and can be used in many different ways. For example, taking callbacks as we do in table view cells, or they are also used for imposing the guidelines. So for example, in some organization, the senior developers write the protocols, they just write the abstract methods, and then junior developers or whomsoever confirms to those protocols they write the implementation part of those methods. So protocols can be used in one of these ways. And then there's inheritance within the protocols. So one protocol can inherit from one or more than one protocol. Because in protocols, the methods are abstract, they do not have implementation, and hence the multiple inheritance sort of things within the protocols can be done. So it gives us more flexibility. If you want to know more about the protocols and extensions and whether they can have properties or what kind of properties or those stuff, I'll drop a link in the description of the Swift documentation for protocols. Have a look. So that's pretty much for this video. A new video comes out every Sunday. So stay tuned. Let's write better code together. Happy coding.